Hey folks, I'm Mr. MathBlog here. This lesson is applying ratio and rate reasoning. So here's our common course strand for our teachers and then our essential question is how can we solve problems with proportions? And then don't forget all of your lessons can be found at MrMathBlog.com and then make sure you pick the California link for this lesson, you guys. There's two sixth grade links there. Um, one of them's for California and one of them's for the rest of the nation. Anyways, uh, recall the ratio 1 to 2 can be expressed as 1 to 2 or 1 with a colon in between it, 1 colon 2, and then on, we're going to be using this uh, ratio from now on, or for most of the time anyways, a fraction 1 to 2, okay, or 1 half. So a proportion, you guys, is an equation. Equation mean there's, a, there's an equal sign. So it's an equation that states when two ratios or rates are equal. Your book likes to say equivalent, so... For example, one-third and two-sixths are equivalent ratios. So we can set the ratios equal to each other. One-third equals two-sixths. And they're, when you have a fraction equals a fraction right here, it's called a proportion. Okay. All right, so here's an example. Ricky and Lucy are partners in a business. Ricky makes $2 in profit for every $5 that Lucy makes. If together they make a profit of $28 on their first item they sell, how much profit does Ricky make? Okay, so let's go ahead and write a proportion, you guys. Remember, a proportion is when one fraction equals another fraction. Okay, notice right here it says together they make. So so the, the ratio of Ricky to Lucy is 2 to 5 right here, 2 to 5. Five, but we want to know uh, Ricky's to get uh, with the ratio of together. So so Ricky's rate is still two, and then together they make. If we add those together, we get seven. So so we're going to use the ratio of, of Ricky's profit to their together profit right there because they gave us a together of 28. So we're going to put that on the bottom right there. So here's our proportion, you guys. So Ricky's profit to the total profit is two dollars to seven dollars. So we're going to set that equal to some unknown to $28 and this is how much uh, that we this is Ricky's profit that we don't know yet okay and then we can just use um, some reasoning right there so ratio reasoning 7 times 4 equals 28 so let's multiply this number times 4 so 2 times 4 gives us $8 right there so if they make a total profit of twenty-eight dollars, then Ricky makes a profit of eight dollars. Okay. Now let's use a little bit of um, uh, reasoning right here. Well, out of the twenty-eight dollars, if Ricky made eight dollars, then Lucy makes the rest of that, or twenty dollars. And let's just check this out. Ricky's profit over Lucy's profit, eight over twenty. Four goes in there twice. Four goes in there five times. So it does reduce to two fifths right there. So so we did check it out right there, and it did work. So now they're going to ask us uh, for every dollar that Lucy makes, every dollar, how much uh, money does Ricky make? Okay, and explain. All right. Well, we know their ratio is two to five right there. So we want to know if this is a dollar for this is Lucy's one right here. So if we divide this by five, that'll tell us Lucy made a dollar right here. So if we divide this by five, then divide this by five. So two dollars divided by five. I did that over here. Five goes into two dollars. We get 40 cents. So for every dollar Lucy makes, um, uh, Ricky makes 40 cents right there. Okay, because we had to remember the ratio is two to five, and we wanted Lucy to be a dollar right there, so we divided that by five. So we divide two dollars divided by five, and there's two dollars represented as a decimal right there. Divided by five is 40 cents. All right, let's try another one, you guys. The members of a math club at Bella Vista High School are ordering some pizza. They plan to order two Hawaiian pizzas for every three pepperoni pizzas. So the ratio of Hawaiian to pepperoni are two to five. So how many uh, uh, pizzas will they order? If they order a total, there's that total word again, so we're going to have to use total, total of 25 pizzas, okay? So the ratio of Hawaiian to pepperoni is two to three because they two Hawaiians for every three pepperonis. But we want Hawaiians to totals right here because how many Hawaiians if they order a total of 25? So we're going to go, uh, it's going to be two to the total of two plus three or five. So our, that gives us a, the ratio two to five right there, okay? So we're going to use that ratio for the 25 pizzas right there, okay? So here we go, we're gonna multiply uh, to get 25 right there. We multiplied five times five, so let's multiply two times five. See, when we multiply by five over five, that's just one, and when you multiply a ratio by one, it won't change the value, it'll just give us an equivalent ratio, okay? So two times five, 
gives us 10 right there. So uh, there's going to be 10 Hawaiian pizzas right there. How many uh, pepperonis do you think? They'd be 15 pepperonis to give us a total of 25 right there. All right, so we can also use equivalent uh, rates to solve real-world problems involving proportions. So we just did one with the pizza one, but let's do one here. Another one. So it takes Carlos 40 minutes to go the distance uh, in this sign. The distance is 3 miles. So our ratio is going to be 40 miles to, I'm sorry, 40 minutes to 3 miles right there. So at this rate, how far can he travel in 60 minutes? Okay, I'm going to show you a different method, a method your book it doesn't do. It's called cross multiply and I kind of like that. We do this a lot in our algebra class. So here's our proportion you guys. Time over distance right here. So our time is 40 minutes and the distance is this 3 miles right here. Alright we're going to set that equal to 60 minutes over how many miles right there. Okay this is our unknown right there. Okay so remember we just got if we did time over distance we can do distance over time that's fine but we just got to make sure we have the same units on top. So we got minutes on top, so we're going to keep minutes on top, okay? If you put minutes on bottom, then, then keep minutes on bottom. Anyways, so since uh, right here, 60 right here is not a multiple of 40 right there, then I'm going to show you a method that's called cross multiply. So we're going to go cross multiply. I'll show you that here. Let me slide that up right here, okay? Cross multiply works with proportions, and remember we have proportions when a fraction equals a fraction, and if you have a fraction equals a fraction, you can cross multiply. All right, let me slide that up right there. Okay, so here we go. We're going to cross multiply right there. So 40 times x, that's what this side says, equals 3 times 60 right there. All right, let's multiply 3 times 60 is 180. All right, so this says 40 times some number equals 180. So if the opposite of multiplication is division. So let's divide 40 into 180. Okay, so here we go. 40 goes into 180 four times. 4 times 40 is 160, and we get 20 left over. Now, we can go ahead and uh, add a decimal and a zero, or we can write this as a mixed number. And I'm going to go ahead and just write that as a mixed number, 4 and 20 40ths right there. So, and 20 40ths is one half right there. So that just tells us that uh, at this rate, Carlo's going to travel four and a half miles in 60 minutes. Okay. All right. Cross multiply is pretty slick. It works on any proportion. Let's go back to that um, Hawaiian uh, pizza one right there. Remember, we got our answer of 10 Hawaiian pizzas right there. Let me show you cross multiply working on how this works on this guy right here. So, if we let our unknown be x and just go ahead and cross multiply there, then we get 5x equals 2 times 25, or 5x equals 50, and so our unknown is x equals 10, and so that would have given us that 10 pizzas right there. Cross multiply works on every proportion, okay? All right, so here's another one. Mr. Parrington has 40 math activities for his class. Each activity is run one at a time, and each runs for the same amount of time. So the first, here's our proportion right here, our, our our first ratio, sorry, the first four activities uh, runs for a total of 50 minutes. So how long does it take to run all 10 of these activities right there, okay? So let's set up the ratios as activities over minutes. Now you can put minutes on top and activities on bottom, but whichever you start, it's got to be consistent. So make sure if activities is on top and minutes is on bottom that it, it's always in that way when we set up our proportion, okay? So since four activities equals 50 minutes, then we have four over 50 right there. Just make sure activities Activities goes on top, so that's going to be this 10 activities, and then how long is going to be our unknown on the bottom right there. So we're going to set that equal to 10 activities over X minutes right there, so here we go. And then uh, we can go ahead and cross multiply on this one, okay, so when we cross multiply, so 4 times X is this 4x right here, and then 50 times 10 is 500, and then we're going to go ahead and divide 4 into 500, and we get 125, so it's going to take us 125 minutes, a little bit over 2 hours to run all 10 activities. Must be a block school where Mr. Parrington teaches. Okay, so um, a scale drawing is a drawing of a real object that is proportionately smaller most of the time or larger for real objects. So a scale is a ratio between two sets of measurements. It shows how much uh, dimension in a scale drawing is related to the actual object. So we use this most of the time with maps. 
So a map is a scale drawing. The measurements on a map are in proportion to the actual size. So it depends on the map because if you look on a map, somewhere on the map, over on the edge, it'll say what the scale is. So for example, if, um, if uh, one inch on a map equals an actual distance of two miles, then our scale is going to be one inch equals two miles. So we can write a scale as a ratio. In this case, it would be one half right there to solve problems right here. So here's an example. So the distance between two schools on Madison Avenue is shown on the map. What is the actual distance? Okay, so right here it says the scale is every inch equals two miles. And right here it says Madison Avenue, the distance is three inches right there. Okay, so we're going to write a proportion. Remember, a proportion is when one fraction equals another fraction right here. So here's our proportion. Um, uh, two mi now I just chose distance on top and then um, the map distance on the bottom. So uh, miles to inches right here. You could have put inches on top and miles on bottom. It doesn't matter. Just make sure you stay con uh, consistent right here. So I put miles over inches. So make sure we put miles over inches right here. Okay, and this one's easy, you guys. So we can just see that 1 times 3 equals 3 right there. So we got to multiply 2 times 3 to get 6 miles right there. Okay, so uh, the actual distance between the two schools is 6 miles. All right, let's try one more of these, you guys. So the distance between Mayberry and Mount Pilot is shown on the map. What is the actual distance between the two towns? Okay, so here, check this out. The scale is 1 inch equals 20 miles, okay? And then right here it says the distance is 2.5 inches. So we're going to use this ratio, 1 to 20 right there. Okay, notice at this time I put inches on top and miles on the bottom. So we just got to be consistent. Make sure inches are on top, miles are on the bottom. So this 2.5 inches is going to go on top. So we're going to go 1 uh, to 20 equals 2.5 to x, where x is the distance in miles right there. Okay, so here we can just go ahead and uh, see that uh, 1 times 2.5 gives us this 2.5. So this is 20 times 2.5, and when we multiply 20 times 2.5, we get... 50 right there. So the distance between uh, Mayberry and Mount Pilot is about 50 miles. Okay. All right. If you guys have any questions or comments, you can always comment on this video and I'll reply reasonably quick within a day or you can email me and I'll give you an email back. Take care, you guys. Hope you're having a great year.